we gave up a few years ago. Um, so we are very open to recommendations if we could be persuaded that they actually would be effective. Mia had symptoms from her home. She could tell that her home was affecting her. She had actually had a whole bunch of work already done in the basement. This is an example of something that we spent a lot of money on um, that did not remedy the problem. There were two hurricanes within two years, and each time we had to evacuate the house, the basement was flooded. <sighs> so we did a tremendous amount of research on local contractors. They showed us the plans. I had the township engineer look at them, and he said, this is an amazing plan. This is very high tech and yet there were still some flooding issues. Within a year, the basement flooded again. There were still a lot of bugs, and that is always an indication that there's a greater problem happening. The heat definitely is, is my biggest issue. I mean, even trying to get ready for work or, you know, blow drying my hair and I'm sweating and I couldn't take it anymore. So this is our master bedroom. Mm -hmm. I'd say this is our biggest problem as far as heat. Um, there's our air conditioner unit that we had to buy. And is there attic access in this closet? In a way. There's, uh, this opening. And I'm not really sure the purpose of it. It leads above the garage. But it's really annoying because there's an attic fan in there that just runs when it gets really hot. Really? So. A lot of this house is pretty standard for homes of this era. Uh, but there were some really interesting things. For example, this doorway to the attic over the garage, that's not normal. I don't know the purpose of it. Okay, I don't know the purpose of it either. I've never seen that in a uh, closet before. So that's a very interesting thing. I like that there's a screen on it to keep the raccoons out. Uh, so we'll figure out what that could have possibly been for, if anything, and, um, and this is definitely gonna be on the list. A wife's in a nursing home. And it's, I'm wearing around in here like a ping pong ball. So I'm thinking of downsizing. And I just want to know if I should put more into the house to get more out of it, or if I should leave it like it is and sell it for what I can get. When it comes to flipping a house, there are a lot of misconceptions out there. First of all, that if it looks great, it's gonna be great. Second, that drywall can fix everything. And third, that it's gonna be cheap and easy and you're gonna make more money when you do it. Building and renovating is hard work. Over here is the hole in the slab where the ducts disappear into the ground. And you can see that they are all rusted out. Complicated systems, drywall, that can all be seen behind with the tools and techniques of the 21st century. So make sure that you know what is going on in the house before somebody comes along and tries to prove that it's not working. We know we want to redo this dock system, and once it's redone, we want it sealed airtight. Then we want to worry about what the static pressure is in the system to make sure it's nice and manageable. Corbett, I want a pool. <sighs> I know. <laughs> When we see an indoor pool, we often think, uh-oh, this could be a source of a lot of problems. Yeah, this could be a red flag, and that's because pool is gonna result in really high humidity. The pool has a fan in it, which was originally designed for a chicken coop. So when we hook up a pressure gauge to this cavernous pool room and kick on the fan, go ahead, Grace. All right. You can see that we go from pressure equalization to half of a blower door test with just that one fan. This has a huge impact on this room, and if the pool room is part of the house, then it's gonna have a huge impact on the house as well, and maybe not one that we've anticipated. 